we should present today is a, a correction to the uh, formerly known classification of uh, customers to peers to make sure you deal with them correctly. And some uh, elements of a prudent approach to avoid uh, the potentially legal consequences of interacting with this, this species uh, without uh, prior warning. I must warn you, some of the presentation material is quite graphical, so I must ask the gentleman in the audience to shield the eyes of the ladies where it's appropriate. Thank you very much. One of the uh, first subspecies you will encounter of uh, Homo customaris is a customaris frustratus. I hope you can read this. A typical encounter between a customaris frustratus and his web designer and developer. Um, I thought you knew that I wanted this. Isn't it clear to you what kind of an idiot are you that you do not know what I am thinking without my saying so? This is all about managing expectations. It has been proven recently, and beyond reasonable doubt, that the customer service actually does not exist. There is no such actual subspecies. However, there are regular customers with acute cases of disappointment and frustration. If not treated, that can lead to chronic displeasure. The only thing you can do with a customer service and to manage your expectations is prevent situations from occurring by using documentation fairly well-known medical approach, which has known to work really well in these cases. If you do so, the reaction will not be as violent as the previous one, but it will just be as stupidity, which again proves that we're dealing with a stupid question. A second subspecies is the uh, Albus Morris, named after the first and only equal uh, member of the academic team who unfortunately died during her research. <laughs> um, she uh, nicknamed this the ever expanding expectation case. For example, when you're half retired and you're sitting next to your customer in the old customer home, um, they would say, well, Why isn't my site compatible with its 425 or 37 and the 3D functions aren't working? And did you not anticipate that that would happen? This is very close to what management literature refers to as scope group. And first of all, it's more discovered that probably the oldest Morris, the actual subspecies, existed but became extinct around 1430. That was the last known um, sighting and documented case we found. However, uh, again, this is sometimes mistaken as uh, customer progress with increased assertivity levels. What you need to do with these subspecies is to write down promises in a contract, clearly delimiting what you will and what you will not do. In that case, if you have a contract which stipulates everything, the customer will prove themselves to be a stupid customer again. Homo customer is from office, the unhappy customer. This is a, a species which is very easily identified because of the noise it makes. It can be quite belligerent, it swears, it screams. And um, we have done a lot of scientific research about how to deal with this type of customer. Um, it is very difficult to put in words, but we have devised a small demonstration that will help you understand how to approach this species. I have to prepare for this presentation or for this part of the presentation. I have brought with me today a freshly captured. Should be very quiet. It's resting under that little piece of cloth. I want to be careful when I deal with it because, as you know, frustrated customers can be very dangerous to deal It's okay. It should be safe. I've done this before. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. They're customers too. This is your customer. Today, your customer is happy. It's Saturday. 
They're not concerned about their site. And then comes Monday. And they look at the site and they're unhappy. They see something wrong. And then you fix it. And you go back to being happy. And then two days later they call and they're angry again. So how can <laughs> this customer, actually always the same customer, can have two different faces depending on what happens outside of the customer's scope. In order to understand that, we need to look inside the customer to understand how that customer works. <coughs> Don't do this with real customers. <laughs> The inner workings of a customer can be explained very simply. This part is the representation of factual information. Your customer has expectations, but also has promises, has needs, has documented stuff. This is something with a certain shape. It doesn't change form that easily. You can pass it along as information on a document and it stays the same shape. It's nearly solid. And you can deal with this very easily. No one debates that this is the center of the act, the hard facts, the needs, what you've written down in the contract, what you've promised to do. This is easy to deal with. This represents the emotions, expectations, the fears, the stress of your customer. Try to pass that along and you will get into trouble. It takes the shape of whatever receptacle you put it in. And it sits around the factual basis inside your customer. So before you can get to the factual basis, you need to go through the emotions and the stress and the expectations. Now, how do you separate the egg white from the egg yolk? One trick is to beat it away. You know what happens when you beat egg white? It just becomes more egg white and less transparent. <laughs> so beating Emotions out of a discussion is not a good idea. It just clobbers the entire issue. This concludes the demonstration. What you need to do is, in reality, do as I did. Separate the facts and the emotions. Acknowledge that they are two parts of an entire customer. Treat them individually, separately. Maybe in different time scales, but tell the customer that it's okay to have egg wash. It's okay to have fears and stress and be unhappy about certain things. But if there's a problem to be fixed, it needs to be fixed first, and then you can deal with the emotions. This is what happens in this uh, presentation in this slide. I can help you right now. I'm sorry about making your life miserable, but let's fix it first. And then we can sit down and have a chat. Obviously, I did not get three hours to present the entire scientific research, so you have to remain vigilant, even if you have understood all these tips, because when not in a position to discuss uh, customers for Paris, for instance, the customer who thanks you for your site but just can't seem to have the money to pay you right now, or uh, the amateurs who said, hey, I just want to pay 1.6 and it stops working, what happened? <laughs> Or the ignorance who thinks, what do you mean it doesn't do comments and friends? I thought every site did that. Facebook does, that's free. <laughs> and to make life easier for you and to remember all the lessons you have shown me, I've written a song, which I will now perform. <laughs> Don't let the guitar mistake oh, oh, oh. me. I can actually play this. I have three chords. I'm going to use all. <laughs> so forgive me if some of this doesn't go entirely perfect. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Happy 